As a flight simulator fan, I've always felt something was missing. Flying is all about feeling the forces, but with a regular joystick, you feel nothing. What if you could actually get feedback through the controls? Imagine a joystick that doesn't just follow your movements, but pushes back. So I think I'm gonna try and build one. And then I'm gonna test it to see what else it can do. Like maybe even fly a plane on its own. But before I can get started, I first need to understand how the joystick functions. It turns out that joysticks rely on something called a gimbal. Gimbals are used everywhere, in drones, cameras, and even rockets, because they allow an object to rotate freely along one or more axes. To break it down, a simple gimbal consists of three main parts, a base, a rotating frame, and the object being rotated. Through a series of pivot points, the frame is able to rotate within the fixed base along a single axis. If we want movement in two axes, we introduce a second frame. The first frame rotates inside the base, while the second frame rotates inside the first. In theory, this makes perfect sense. Instead, I'm opting for a modified design. In this system, both the inner and outer frames pivot directly from the base. This setup allows me to mount the motors on the base itself. Of course, this design comes with its own set of limitations, but we'll just have to wait and see once I get a prototype working. With that in mind, I started designing a more refined version of the system and ordered all the parts I'll need. I picked up eight bearings for the pivot points, along with some threaded inserts to help with assembly. Now it's time to actually build this one. So we have something that resembles a functional gimbal, but we're not quite finished yet. I need a sturdy superstructure to hold everything in place. So I went back into CAD and made a slightly over-engineered base that's designed to suspend the gimbal in the air. And with everything assembled, I finally had a working gimbal system. Testing it out, I was able to rotate the joystick smoothly in each axis, which is what I expected. But as soon as I tried to move the joystick with both axes together, it kept getting stuck. The issue is, it's over constrained. Since both axes pivot from the same base, movement in one direction directly affects the other, severely limiting the joystick's range of motion. This turned out to be a much bigger problem than I originally thought. And since I'd rather not redesign everything from scratch, I needed a quick fix. So I adjusted the inner pivot points by bringing them closer to the center of the mechanism and reducing the twist at the outer pivots. It's not perfect, but it should be good enough to move on to the next challenge, which is getting the joystick to move on its own. First, I mounted the stepper motors inside the base. I've made it so that they can slide left and right, which will allow me to adjust belt tension later on. For the brains of the project, I'm using an Arduino Micro. This will send signals to a pair of TMC2208 stepper drivers, controlling the motors. After some quick cable management, I wired everything up, verified the microcontroller was working, and fit the electronics inside the base. One of the hardest parts of making a joystick like this is ensuring there's enough torque for meaningful feedback. To handle this, I'm using a belt-driven pulley system. The large pulley has 120 teeth, while the smaller one has just 20. That means six turns of the motor equals one turn of the joystick, and this reduction should, in theory, provide enough torque. After breaking a few things and fixing them, it was finally time for the first movement test. At this point I was honestly surprised. The joystick can move pretty quickly and accurately. But once again moving both axes at the same time exposed another issue. This time the bearing pillow blocks were making contact with the frame. So a quick redesign later, I was able to fix that and also increase the single axis range of motion significantly. The next step is to track the joystick's movement, which means adding sensors. Since I'm using stepper motors, I could try tracking movement by counting steps. But that method only works if no external force is applied to the shaft. The second I touch the stick, any movements I make are completely invisible to the system, and the motor just starts skipping steps. So the solution is to use some magnetic encoders. 
which come with these tiny diametric magnets, meaning one half is north and the other half is south. As long as the magnets stay within about 3mm of the sensor, it can accurately track their orientation. The plan is to attach the magnets to the back of the stepper motor shafts, which is easier said than done. This should allow me to track the exact position of the joystick, even when external forces are applied. So that brings us one step closer to a working flight stick. But even though I can now read the joystick's position, all it does is send out the raw numbers into the serial monitor, which is not exactly useful for controlling a plane. So instead of just printing data, I need to make this thing work as an actual USB input device. Luckily, that's where the Arduino Micro comes in. Unlike most microcontrollers, it has built-in USB support, meaning I can make it act like a mouse or keyboard. To wrap up the build, I designed and 3D printed a custom joystick grip. And since flying a plane also means pressing buttons, I'm adding a micro switch to the grip for a trigger. And once all the components were assembled, I had a fully functional force feedback joystick. Which is pretty cool to be honest. I'm not expecting this to work first time, but we'll just have to wait and see. After a few tests and a few broken 3D printed parts, I got the joystick accurately moving and sending inputs to the flight simulator. So I verified that it works, but how does it actually handle something like landing? Not very well, apparently. I'm not the greatest flight sim player in the world, so it did take me a few tries. And I'm not gonna lie, it's quite hard to control. Right now I've got very simple feedback working, so the motors are trying to keep the joystick at the centre, so moving in any direction takes some effort. After managing the least convincing landing ever and proceeding to mess around with the controls a bit, I decided to move on to something else, taking off. But instead of me being the one on the controls, this time I want to let the joystick control the plane by itself. And by that I just mean pre-program some inputs for it to follow. So I did some testing flights, each to varying levels of success. But not before long I figured out the timing, and what I ended up with was this. Okay, enough messing around. I had a lot of fun with this project. I've never actually used a joystick before, so I was very surprised with how immersive the experience is. And fighting against the motors, which actually provide a hefty amount of resistance, adds another level to the experience. And honestly, I'm surprised this project actually worked as well as it did. Going into this, I didn't have a concrete idea for how a lot of the components would work. So I had to do a lot of trial and error as I went along. And I'm lucky that a lot of the things that I tried actually ended up working.